Eggs are the main ingredient of many of the dishes that we have around the world and enjoy so much. Chicken meat is a big player in the fast food industry, selling food like chicken wings, burgers, and nuggets. There's countless food options that have eggs and chicken meat in them. So, as you might have guessed, chicken-based dishes are undeniable winners when it comes to the food industry, which is why chicken farming is so important on a global scale. When we talk about chicken farms, there can be a variety of them. Some are just part of a small family business, while others are so big that they make millions of dollars a year. And in today's video, we're going to have a sneak peek into a multi-million dollar chicken farm. I'm sure we all want to know what that looks like. But before we get into the video, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, as well as hit that post notification bell so you never miss another update from us. There is a few million dollar chicken farms, but today we're going to have a sneak peek into America's leading agricultural supporter, Tyson Foods. From what we know, without this overly successful farm industry, America would not have the chicken business that it has today. Chicken is not the only animal on their farms, as this multinational corporation is also the world's second largest producer and marketer of beef and pork. Located in the Midwest, with 16 locations in Arkansas, 9 in Iowa, and 11 in Texas, Tyson Foods have been providing high-quality chicken since the 1940s. Now, let's take a look at what Tyson Chicken has to go through in order to end up on the dinner plates of people all over the world. Currently, the company has about 6,000 farms employed who dedicate most of their time raising healthy chickens. The environment these chickens are raised in is quite advanced and has every equipment to make them feel comfortable. Chickens are brought up in large homes. The house is 54 by 500 feet long, so there's a lot of space for them to move. These houses are thermostatically built. In winter, automatic heaters keep them warm, and in the summer, fans and cooling cell pads help with circulation of air and keep the chickens cool. These large homes also have an automated feeding mechanism for birds. There are nipple drinkers with a push button, so that way the chickens can drink water whenever they want and are provided with an endless supply. There's also automatic feeders that give chickens specially formulated food, and there are many people involved in raising these chickens. They have animal well-being specialists that take care of the bird's health, nutritionists that provides chickens with the right amount of vitamins, minerals, and so on. As we see, these chickens are in good hands. It's impressive that most of these birds are uniform in size. As described above, they're camped in a very comfortable environment, and whenever one of them gets sick, an animal well-being specialist take good care of it and helps it to recover. Now let's talk a little bit about the popular myth that Tyson Food uses antibiotics in the chicken's food and water. To be honest, that is far from the truth. And in fact, Tyson Foods has a no antibiotic ever or NAE policy. It's widely used method to add antibiotics to the food so that chickens don't end up getting sick. And it's shown to have many adverse side effects on the birds. What is more is that nobody wants to have antibiotic impregnated food on the table. In 2017, Tyson Foods had announced that all Tyson branded chicken would be having no antibiotics ever marked on the product. This makes Tyson Foods the leading producer of NAE chicken around the world. So what does NAE mean? Well, it means that at any phase of a chicken's life, from egg to slaughter, it's not given any amount of antibiotic as a preventative medicine. The managing director of veterinary medicine at Tyson Foods, Bill Hewitt, says, quote, while we are the world's leading producer of NAE chicken, you should know we do occasionally use antibiotics, but for good reason. Just like people, chickens can end up becoming ill, and if they do, it's our obligation to treat them. We start by using non-antibiotic treatments that may include probiotics, essential oils, and certain mineral salts. If these treatments don't work, a veterinarian like myself will end up providing a prescription for the antibiotic. So, antibiotics are only used for treatment and not for prevention. What's more, antibiotic-treated chickens are not labeled as NAE. As Bill Hewitt continues to say, quote, in 2017, less than one percent of the chickens raised for Tyson Foods were treated on farms by veterinarians with shared class antibiotics, those used for both animals and humans. But it's important for us people to know that we do not label birds as NAE chickens if they've been treated with antibiotics. As somebody who has dedicated his life to the health and well-being of animals, I'm proud of the actions Tyson Food and our industry have taken to provide a healthy growing environment for our chickens. When absolutely necessary, we use shared class antibiotics, those used for both 
animals and humans to help our chickens recover from illnesses, but never as a preventative measure. Next, let's talk about the growth rate of chickens in Tyson Foods. It's a widespread idea amongst the population to label chicken based on their growth rate as bad growers and slow growers. Fast-growing chickens are usually associated with bad as they are thought to be raised with growth-inducing chemicals. Some people state that Tyson's chickens are among fast growers, which just isn't true at all. Senior Director of Animal Welfare at Tyson Foods, Karen Christian, says, quote, We raise chickens at a rate appropriate to their breed. Chickens have been selectively bred over the years for certain attributes. Yes, the size of their breasts and wings, but as importantly, for their health, skeletons, strength of their legs, and the way they walk. This type of selective nutrition seems to have shown a great result, as Karen Christian says. Quote, This is the same animal husbandry practice farmers have used for centuries. The fundamental principles of selective breeding are the exact same that they've always been. Big mama plus big daddy equals big baby. Scientists have helped us deliver more consistency, but the fundamentals still remain. Where we are seeing more improvements beyond these fundamentals is in nutrition, housing, and management. Our nutritionists work to ensure that birds have the food that matches to their nutrient needs, a combination of corn and soybean meal, along with vitamins and minerals to balance their diets. Chickens are omnivores, meaning they eat things other than plant-based products, so a small amount of meat is added to completely balance their diets. What we're trying to say here is that chickens can grow at any rate. They're provided with appropriate nutrition and the rate at which a certain breed grows is individual. What's more, there is no evidence that slow-growing chickens are healthier. What we do know is that slow-growing breeds come with an impact to the environment, as these breeds are far less sustainable and aren't a long-term option for feeding our planet's rapidly expanding population. The main goal of the Tyson Foods is to raise a healthy chicken, regardless of the rate at which it grows. It just so happens that most appropriate breeds for this industry tend to be more on the side of fast growers. As someone who has spent my life in animal welfare, the care of the animal is top of mind for me when making choices about the food I put on my dinner table. That is true for Tyson as well. The welfare of chickens is critical for us throughout our supply chain. The success of poultry farmers and Tyson Foods revolves around a shared commitment. Care for our birds, says Karen. Finally, we'll address the rumors going around that Tyson Foods is treating its contract farmers unfairly. Some people have claimed that this huge meat industry is using its market power in a profitable and abusive way to the farmers, cutting down on their payments. Now, we don't want that, do we? Some farmers even took this unfair behavior to court. Charles Morris is one of the farmers who leads this case against the organization. Quote, I had been growing chickens for years in Florida before talking to Tyson about moving to Kentucky to grow chickens for them. We were negotiating the sale price for the chicken houses, and I was about to walk away from the negotiations when they dropped the price significantly. They were almost begging me to take on those houses. That's what they do. They offer potential growers seemingly sweet deals to get them into the business, and you might do well well initially, but things go downhill fast, says Charles, about the experience that he got while working with Tyson Foods. They also said, quote, Tyson can't grow these chickens because they don't make the money doing it. The company knows this. The industry also knows that once a contract farmer chicken house goes up, they're going to grow chickens even as they sink into debt. Cutting the payment to farmers, who are the core functioning scaffolds in this industry, is very dangerous, as it creates mistrust and will most definitely affect the quality of work. So, we're left to hope that this problem will be solved. On that note, we've come to the end of the video. Those were just a couple of details that we discussed about this million-dollar chicken farm. There's also more ways to think about Tyson Foods, including their products. And we would also like to know your opinion about the video. Don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and press that like button as well as the subscribe button plus the notification bell so you never miss another update from us. Until next time, guys, we'll see you later.